We saw what the former president did in Iowa. We saw what he did in New Hampshire. He is leading by double digits in all major polls so far in South Carolina. Uh, he is the front runner. This does not seem to be having any sort of measurable effect on Republican primary voters so far, does it? No, it hasn't so far, Craig, but that's not to say that it remains the case in the future entirely here. I mean, when you look across the first two primaries and the ones coming up, including the caucus on Nevada on Thursday night, which will be the next state to award any delegates, Republican primary voters have indicated that they essentially believe what Donald Trump has told them, the idea that he is being unfairly targeted, in this case, for political speech, but across all of these cases, because he is the strongest challenger to Joe Biden. But when you look at polling data, including our new NBC News poll that came out over the weekend, and you do see the potential peril for Donald Trump in a general election down the line. The numbers in that poll, which show him leading Joe Biden narrowly right now nationally, turn against him if he is convicted of a crime. And so the timing here becomes very important. Does this case actually go to trial before a Republican convention? Does it go to trial before voters start casting their ballots in a general election in the early fall? Remember, election day is now election month in many cases. When and if these things are adjudicated and how they go could still be a determining factor. I've been covering Donald Trump for more than a year now, covering this campaign since its inception. And the one thing that has been clear to me across all of this is that the things that are driving uh, voter beliefs about Donald Trump and about his relative strength against Joe Biden and the Republican field have had far more to do with what's happened in courtrooms than what's happened in traditional campaign trail stops. And it's worth pointing out, Craig, Donald Trump's attorneys will be back in court in Washington, D.C., in front of the Supreme Court on Thursday, when they'll be arguing whether he should be able to stay on the ballot in Colorado. Remember, he was, he was uh, a judge there, the Colorado Supreme Court, rather, had determined he's ineligible to be on the ballot in Colorado uh, under the 14th Amendment for having been involved in insurrection. The, the challenges for Donald Trump and his both ability to re remain a candidate and to remain a viable candidate, to remain somebody who's not locked down in a courtroom until Election Day, are broad and manifest across many different cases cases in many different jurisdictions. And this week, the one-two punch of this appeals court hearing today, that court hearing on Thursday, the day of the next contest in this race, I think really display that quite clearly. Uh, Garrett, again, we just got this, this word about 20 minutes ago. Haven't heard anything from Mr. Trump's campaign, anything from the White House so far. And do we expect at some point today, perhaps, to hear anything from, from the White House? That's a good question, Craig. I mean, the White House has, in general, tried to keep some distance between themselves and Donald Trump and all of these legal challenges. They don't want to feed into the perception that somehow the White House is connected to this or behind this the way that Donald Trump talks about it. But that said, the White House did make pretty clear, and Joe Biden, I think, has made fairly clear, that they didn't believe in this concept of presidential immunity the way that Donald Trump described it. As Laura pointed out, his lawyers were forced to answer questions in the extreme, if this idea of presidential immunity was real, could a president order an assassination of a political rival? And when, when Trump's lawyers were pushed that far, I think it made it easier for this White House to say, yeah, we definitely don't agree with their interpretation of that. But from a from a governing standpoint, I don't think it's particularly valuable for the Biden White House to get involved. And from a political standpoint, they want to keep some distance here. Now, I wouldn't expect the same from Democratic allies of the current president, who are going to want to amplify any message about Donald Trump's legal challenges, the possibility of him going on trial, the possibility of him being convicted. They understand the politics quite clearly, but who the messenger is here uh, today and going forward, I think will be very important. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.